听。Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's setup is quite different as you've noticed. I've officially moved out and I'm kind of fixing up my little vanity area. So still in the works, I'm missing a lot of things, I need my mirror, so on and so forth. But I thought I would mention that really quickly. I mean, it's kind of obvious that it's different. But today I'm gonna to be doing a get ready with me. I'm kind of going out tonight and I'm gonna do my makeup. I thought I haven't really done a full face of makeup on camera for you guys in a while. So that's what we're gonna do. I have no idea what look I'm gonna create. What I'm gonna use, I have no idea, but we're gonna do it together and let's get the ball rolling. First things first is my Pixi Hydrating Milky Mist. Mm, I love this stuff so much. I think you guys already know that. It's amazing. I also have this primer from the Estee Edit and I used it yesterday for the first time and I actually really liked it. So I'm gonna use it again today. It's the Pore Vanishing Moisturizer Matte Hydrator and Primer. So it's going to control the oil on your skin as well as hydrate it and make you look poreless. That sounds amazing. That literally is everything that you would want in a primer. So I'm gonna take a little bit on a flat brush and put this on my skin. You can definitely use your hands, but I don't know, I've kind of went back to doing it with a brush and I really like it. I look crazy, but I forgot to talk about what I'm putting on my face before I put it on my face. This is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Invisible Cover Stick Foundation. I haven't used this in a while and I'm using actually a new shade I've never tried before. This is Y215. Hopefully once we blend it out, it looks better, but yeah, that's why I look like that. I'm going to blend it out with my Tarte Beauty Sponge. I actually like this sponge a lot. It's very soft. It's not as hard as other beauty sponges are. It's definitely still not like the Beauty Blender, but it's like my second favorite. might have been a little bit too light um, it looks worse on camera but in real life it actually matches my neck but my body's always darker this is this is actually kind of scary but I'm gonna go in and do some cream contouring I tried it in my makeup forever video you guys if you've seen that you know like it went a little bit crazy and I was like three shades too dark so I'm gonna try to tone it down a little this is the ColourPop sculpting stick in Dove I haven't used this in a while and I really like the tone of it because it's very taupey it's not orangey or too warm. So I'm gonna start off in sections. I'm gonna do one side first. And I'm gonna use a smaller beauty blender to blend this out. I'm also going to apply some to my nose. I've been trying to teach myself how to kind of nose contour lately. I usually just put a little bit of bronzer on the sides but I don't know how some people make it look so easy, but nose contouring, I don't know, it's hard. My foundation's at like a medium coverage right now. I definitely could have added another layer, but I kind of want to keep my foundation light and go in with a concealer. You can still see some of my like freckles and scarring. I'm going to take my Bare Minerals Bare Skin Complete Coverage Serum Concealer. I just bought a new one. You guys, this is amazing. It's one of my top concealers. I'm going to place this underneath my eyes. I really like this color because it's not super brightening, but it's like my skin tone and it looks very nice and natural on me. Yeah. And I'm just going to blend it out. For my setting powder, I'm using my favorite and this is the CoverFX Perfect Setting Powder. I absolutely love this stuff so much. If you are looking for a translucent powder, that's amazing. I totally recommend this one. Hello? Yes. Just gonna use my damp beauty blender to set it. I love using a damp beauty blender with translucent powder. It applies so beautifully. It's less powdery and it just looks really good, especially underneath the eyes and it doesn't crease. I'm not really a baker. I just kind of set my face as soon as I'm done with my foundation because it's quicker and I don't have time to sit there and wait for my powder to absorb into my skin. Plus, I feel like using a damp beauty blender kind of does the baking thing quicker without having to wait, if that makes any sense at all. It probably doesn't, but I don't know. I just never saw the point in baking personally. Definitely gonna need some bronzer to warm up the face a little bit. I'm gonna be taking this one by the Estee Edit. It's the Barest Bronzer in Light Medium. It's huge, it's beautiful, I love the tone, it's matte, I like it, it works well. And I haven't used it in a while, so that's what I'm gonna use today. I'm gonna take it on my favorite 
contour bronzing brush right now. This is the Zoeva 127. Love this. Just going to take, I was going to say a little bit, but honestly, I really need a lot of bronzer today, so we're going to go crazy. For my blush, I'm going to use one of my longtime favorite blushes. This is by Urban Decay. It's in the shade Video. It's perfect. It's amazing. It's beautiful. If I had to pick one blush to use for the rest of my life, I feel like this would be it. Maybe. Wow, that's a really big statement. Oh my goodness, that made me nervous. Um, I'm using my Bedellium Tools 942. It's like scratched up. I can't even see. I've had this brush forever. Anyways, I'm just gonna take my blush on my cheeks. The shade is beautiful. Perfect for every day. It's kind of a matte, dusty, neutral rose. <sighs> All can't stop raving about it. I'm also using my Urban Decay highlighter in the shade Sin. This is so pretty, another long time favorite. I'm taking that on my e.l.f. 105 brush that I always use for my highlighter. I'm gonna put this on. I, ooh, I love this one. This is such a beautiful highlight, very pigmented, very blinding, but it blends out beautifully as well. Okay, so we are moving on to eyebrows and I'm using this Soap & Glory 2-in-1 archery brow pencil and this is a shade brown and out i've really really been liking this it's kind of like the benefit goof proof brow pencil where it's like an angled retractable pencil but on the other side there is a brow gel which is really cool now that i finished my eyebrows i'm going to take my coffee and i'm going to take a sip from it Delicious. Really quickly, I'm going to take this Buxom Plumping Lip Gloss, and this is in the shade Sandy. I really, really like this a lot. I like to put it on while I do my eyes before my lips because it kind it doesn't like plump it like huge, but it kind of makes it smooth and everything glides on better. So I really like this. I'm going to put a little bit on right now. I really like this color too, and you can definitely wear it on its own, which I do. But, you know, it's also a good lip prep as well. For my eyes, I thought I would do something a little bit different. I've been playing around with makeup lately and trying new things and I've been loving them. The other day I posted a picture on Instagram of like an all plum purple mauve look and I'm obsessed. And I've never really done anything like that before. So today, I think I want to go on the green side. These are some of my ColourPop shadows. I kind of want to create something in this green olive category. I'm not quite sure what, but... I think I want to do green today. I also have some of my neutral ColourPop shadows I'm going to throw in there as well because we do need some of those neutral shades. But yeah, I'm really excited. Let's zoom you guys in a little. I'm going to start off with the ColourPop shadow in Hear Me Out. It's just a matte nude bone shade. I'm going to place this right underneath my eyebrow. I feel like all my eye looks always start with the same thing, a matte shadow under the brow. I don't know, it's just like a staple for me. By the way, these are all going to be ColourPop shadows, so I'm just going to say the names. This is in the shade Wake Up Call. I love putting this in my crease. It's like that perfect transition shade. And this is on my Smith 232 brush. You guys know I use this brush to death. I'm going to take Team Captain. This is a matte olive khaki green. And on the same Smith brush, I'm going to pick some up and try to put this in my crease and see what happens. This is all experimental, guys. We're learning today. I've never really put green in my crease before. I actually really like this. It blended out to a very wearable color. It's not very green in my crease, if that makes sense. But anyways, moving on. I'm taking the shade Sideline and this is a really pretty duochrome. I want to put this on my lid and see how that comes out. That's actually so pretty. I really hope the camera is picking that up. I'm going to go back to the shade Team Captain and I'm going to apply this underneath my bottom lash line. Smoke out this look a little bit. This is like the no mirror makeup challenge right now because... I am doing this blindly. I'm taking the shade Game Changer. It's a really pretty foiled metallic baby seafoam green shade. And this is gonna go on the inner corners of our eyes.
I want to darken up my crease just a little bit more, so I'm going to take Cloud9. It's like one of my favorite shadows, and I'm going to take that on my Smith brush, just a very small amount, and focus that on the outer parts of my crease. Unfortunately, this next product is not available anymore, but I really, really like this and I want to put the bright green in my waterline. There's a lot of green eyeliners out there, but I find that these ColourPop cream gel colors last a long time. This is in the shade Maybe, if you were curious. It looks like this. I just really like it. I'm going to put it in my waterline BRB. I'm about to do something crazy right now. I'm gonna wear a wing. <laughs> I feel like a wing liner would look really, really pretty with this look, but I'm going to go and do that really quick and then be back because I like to get really close to my mirror when I do my eyeliner. It's really hard to film, so by the power of editing, we have eyeliner. I'm gonna finish off the eyes with my Stila Huge Extreme Lash Mascara. And lastly, to finish off the look, we have lips. I'm using something new today that I actually bought from Walmart a while ago, and I still haven't tried it, so I figured I would try it with you guys today. This is by Heart Candy. It's the Velvet Mousse Matte Lip Color, and it comes in a really cute tin box. I thought it was really intriguing. So I picked up two shades. I got the shade Sweet Pea and Daffodil. Really cool. This is a really baby pink bubblegum shade, and this looks really like a dark nude. I don't know, but I want to use this one today. This is what it looks like inside. It has a little mirror. I don't want to blind you guys. I'm very excited. I hope this works out. I hope it's a good product. If it is, very affordable. <laughs> but this is what the lipstick looks like. It's very sleek. You know, let's open it up. Ooh, the applicator is quite long. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's weird. It's, ooh. Mmm, smells like cookies. It smells very sweet. I'm very excited to try this. I don't know if it's a matte lipstick or if it's like a satin lipstick or I don't know really what to expect. But let's just get into it. Oh. Okay. Very opaque. Ooh, I like this color. I'm excited. So this is the lipstick on. I haven't really given it time to dry yet. I'm not sure if it will. Um, we're gonna find out. But right off the bat, super pigmented, very creamy, applied amazingly. I really like this. The shade is kind of like a terracotta peachy nude. It's a very interesting shade. I'm digging it. I think it looks really pretty with the eyes. I'm gonna give it like, I don't know, a couple minutes to see if it really dries down, like what kind of lip product it is. And I'll be right back. I've given the lipstick a little bit of time and I've come down to the conclusion that it is definitely not a matte lipstick where it dries down to a non-transfer finish. It has more of a matte satin finish and it will definitely come off if you kiss someone or kiss, kiss your hand. It definitely will come off, but once you kind of apply it and let it sit and do that, it kind of gives it a matte look. It's not very glossy, really, really comfortable on the lips. I actually like this a lot. Um, so if you like a matte lip, but don't like a ultra like matte lip that dries on your lips, you might really, really like this. I'm so impressed. I'm very happy that I like this. This is the final look. I absolutely love how everything came out and I hope that you guys did as well. And as usual, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Makeup by Jessie. I'm always posting a lot of stuff on there, pictures, selfies, makeup looks, things like that. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.